Hello everyone, I'm bringing you the Mannequin of the Month for April 2024 today. As you can probably immediately tell, I'm somewhat under the weather, so I apologise for that, the stuffy nose and so forth. I will attempt to talk over it as much as possible during the course of the video, but please bear with that, obviously. Uh, the topic we're going to talk about today is, of course, chosen via a poll over on Patreon, as, as is always the case for Mannequin of the Month. The corporal tier over there get to vote each month on what's going to be covered. And the topic which came at the top of the poll for this month was a private and Royal New Zealand Infantry Regiment, the early 1980s, circa 1980 basically. So it's a little bit of a difficult topic to talk about because there was quite a lot of variation in kit at the time. There were general themes but there were the kit that was in circulation at the time came from quite a few different sources and quite a few different combinations of bits and pieces would be seen. The basic web equipment for example was essentially M1956 but with some more modern US components thrown in, some Australian made components, some US made components and a mix and match of these components could be seen in, in an individual set of web equipment. So from that point of view, you could see quite the variety, much as the basic sort of setup would be similar from man to man, the actual sources of these components could be different. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, in terms of headgear, you see both the, the bush hat worn, the, uh, the, the J hat, or as we have here, the M1 helmet, and these were worn with a variety of different covers, helmet nets, scrim, Again, that does vary quite considerably. So we have one example here, which we'll talk about in a little bit more detail, of course. And in terms of basic uniform, very common to see, particularly in the warmer months, of course, the green uniform worn, which is greens, which we have here, a set of New Zealand made greens, shirt and trousers. There were also Australian shirts in, in circulation at the time. The pixie or, or twiggy greens were still around to some degree. And you see Australian made trousers as well. So that this time period, there was still quite a mix and match of kit, obviously shared stores and stocks and so forth, uh, which had been the case during the Vietnam War. And there were still various items in stock, which were sort of used up. Uh, and it's quite common to see in photographs of the time, Australian items being used alongside in both in terms of uniform, uh, alongside New Zealand items, both in terms of the uniform and in terms of the web equipment as well. So, as I say, we're going to talk about all of this in a bit more detail. Just take it, what we have on the mannequin here is just one example of what you might have seen. Uh, and there was quite a bit of variety at the time. So starting at the top, as we normally do, as already mentioned, we have the M1 helmet here. And this had been introduced into the Australian Army in the 1960s and into the New Zealand Army as well. They'd moved, both moved away from the British uh, Mark II, basically, and had moved on to using the US M1, basically an exact clone. And some of them were indeed US helmets uh, used by uh, Australian and New Zealand forces. So we have an M1 helmet here with one example of the variety of covers and various other ways of camouflaging these, which were seen at the time. In this case, we have a post-Vietnam War US ERDL helmet cover. Uh, this is the progenitor, the, the previous design from Woodland. So it's very, very similar to Woodland, but the pattern is basically smaller. All the shapes are smaller, but they are basically the same shapes as you'd see on the uh, Woodland camouflage. You also occasionally see the uh, vine leaf pattern helmet covers. You see uh, nets, you see scrim, uh, you see all sorts of different helmet coverings as mentioned. But this is just one example here, the helmet cover used here. In this case, worn without a helmet band, rubber bands were sometimes used around these as well, like inner tube, cut from inner tube. That's another thing you'll see. Uh, I say quite a bit of variety there. In terms of the web equipment, as already mentioned, this is basically M1956 equipment. We have the modified Australian ammunition pouches here. These are Australian made, used by New Zealand forces quite extensively, which is a carryover from the Vietnam War. These were introduced for use of Australian troops and New Zealand troops in Vietnam to give a greater carrying capacity when compared to the US M1956 uh, ammunition pouches. They're considerably taller, and so they will actually take uh, Bren gun magazines, for example. They will take uh, the, the, uh, the magazines for the L4. Um, they will take the long magazines for the uh, L2 in Australian service, the long straight 30 round magazines. And in New Zealand service, they were useful both for the 20 round magazines for the SLR, which was still in use at the time to a degree, and also both 20 round and 30 round magazines for the M16, which was used extensively by New Zealand forces at the time as well. So a useful uh, pouch from that point of view. You also see the original US pouches in use at this time as well, to some degree, so a mix and match there. The belt is a US M1956 belt, and these were again replaced to some degree with more modern US items, which were compatible with the rest of the equipment, obviously. But we'd have an original US M1956 belt there. The suspenders are more modern. These are from US Alice, the US Alice equipment, and these are commonly seen at the time as well. Again, mixed and matched with M1956. So 
a point to note with these is obviously they do have uh, rings up on the shoulders here, but when these are used with M1956 type pouches, it's very common to see the clips actually clipped up to the hole in the buckle here and here, as you can see, to support the pouches. So the Alice pouches don't have this strap on the back. The suspenders hook directly into the back of the pouches. So when, say, these aren't really designed for use with the uh, hooks to support the pouches as we have here, and this is an expedient method of working around that is to have the hooks hooked into the buckles on the front of the suspenders there. And a final thing to mention while we're talking about the web equipment, the right-hand ammunition pouch here has the ubiquitous nylon toggle rope, which was an item seen prior to the Vietnam War in both, uh, certainly in Australian service, I'm not sure if it was in use in New Zealand service, but certainly was used by New Zealanders in Vietnam, and then would continue to be seen after that as well, often suspended from the pouch using the uh, loops for securing grenades on the side, and often carried on the right-hand ammunition pouch as we have here. Move on to talk about the uniform now, and this is a set of 1970s dated uh, jungle greens or greens uniform, a New Zealand made greens uniform. The shirt is quite distinctive, it has pointed pocket flaps as you can see here, a double pleat down the front there. Closes with small battle dress type buttons. The trousers are of the crossover belt type, similar to Australian uh, manufacture, but a little bit different. And both shirt and trousers are made of a green cotton drill. And uh, I believe the shirt is dated 1974, if I remember correctly. I think the trousers are 1978. I believe these are of a pattern that was worn uh, during, that was in existence and worn during the Vietnam War uh, and certainly manufactured through into the late 1970s, as we can see the trousers dated 1978. Moving this around to look at the right-hand side, you can see the side profile of the helmet there. We have the chin strap just hooked up around the back of the, the helmet there, just clipped together around the back of the, uh, the helmet to keep it out of the way. You can see more of that camouflage pattern on the helmet cover there. You can see the epaulette of the, on the shirt here, it does button up here, it's just hidden underneath the suspenders of the web equipment. You can see the ammunition pouch here, a slightly more sort of front on view of that. Obviously it is pulled round somewhat on the hip, as you can see there. And then we have the sleeve of the shirt coming down here, worn with the sleeves unrolled, very common to see at the time. And these close with a, a single button and it is just an open cuff there. There's no gusset or anything, obviously makes these very easy to roll up if required. And you can see we have a, a slightly smaller button still to close the cuff there. You can also see some of the webbing round on the back, which we'll have a look at in a bit more detail in just a moment. We have one canteen there and the, uh, the, the bum pack, as we referred to in Australian and New Zealand service, uh, more commonly referred to as the butt pack, uh, from obviously its US origins. We'll move this round now and have a look at the back and look at those other bits of equipment. One thing I'll note at the back here, please excuse the shirt being so bunched up. This is on quite a small mannequin to allow me to fit the trousers uh, as well as the shirt. So the shoulders are a bit narrow for this really. And so the shirt's got rather bunched up, which doesn't give you quite the right impression of this, but just to note that here, you can see the back of the helmet here with the chin strap coming around there. It's been clipped up to itself to keep it out of the way. We have the single central strap coming down for the Alice suspenders here. And this then splits off into two clips uh, in a Y form at the back here, an upside down Y form. This would normally clip onto the back of the belt. Obviously with the Alice equipment, the field pack, obviously colloquially referred to as bum pack or butt pack, was not commonly used. There was a training pack and it was used to some degree in the field as well, but really this, these were intended to clip onto the back of the belt. In this instance, we can see how they look when they're clipped onto a, a field pack. We have an Australian made M1961 field pack here, as you can see, again, quite part of a large uh, stock of Australian made M1956, M1961 components, which were in New Zealand stores and we issued out at the time. One other source of equipment to note at the, at the time, which you do see occasionally in photographs, is British 1944 pattern as well. There were still some bits of that floating around and that's particularly true of canteens and the, the, the carrier for them or water bottles and the carriers for them. They do turn up in photos at the time as well. But in terms of canteens, we have two Australian made examples in Australian covers. These are modified M1956. They can be carried on the belt as we have them here, or they also have hanger hooks on the back, which you can see an example of here. So they can be suspended from the eyelets on the belt as well. We have one of those on each hip, as you can see there. Now the load that was carried would depend on exactly what sort of training was going on, what sort of operation was going on. So this is just one example, and obviously including the field pack here, which was still in use at the time the load that was carried, the number of canteens carried and so forth would vary. So there's just something to note here. This is just one setup of web equipment to show you. There were, would be variations on this depending on uh, the, uh, the operation of the training being conducted at the time. 
So we have that there, that's the back of the mannequin, not much more to see from the shirt or the trousers here. I suppose you can just about see the rear pocket on the trousers there. Uh, you can just about see, if I, if I lift the field pack up, that's a little clearer to see there. We have the, the rear pocket on the trousers there, as you can see, again with a battle dress type button there, uh, securing that with the, the pointed flap there. So the rear pocket on the trousers. We'll move this around now and have a look at the left hand side. Moving around to look at the left hand side here, if I lift the arm of the shirt out of the way, nothing more to see there, it's just a mirror image of the other side. We have the second water bottle or canteen in its carrier here. And just as we saw on the other side, this is a modified Australian M9056 design, modified from the original design and having kind of hanger hooks, as already mentioned. Visually, it's somewhat different, made of a finer canvas, and it has this light green nylon edging around the top there, around the two uh, securing flaps, and it closes with green uh, snaps or press studs. And this was a common feature of those components of Australian made M1956, which included snaps, they were painted this green colour, as you can see here. So I hope you found it interesting looking at this. I'm always very keen to find more photographs of New Zealand forces from sort of the immediate post-Vietnam War years, the sort of uh, the, the couple of decades through up to the end of the Cold War uh, post then. The evolution of the kit at that time is quite interesting, particularly the introduction of DPM. So if anyone has any photographs, anyone who served at the time has any photographs they'd be willing to share, I'd be very interested to hear from you. And as I say, it's been having access to some of these photographs have been very useful in putting together this mannequin to talk through the kit and talk about some of the variations which were around at the time. I do hope you found this interesting, as I say. If you have found this interesting and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as I always say, a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It really is greatly appreciated. As I always say, thank you all very much indeed. Of course, if you want to vote on what's going to be covered in the Mannequin of the Month each month, the corporal tier over on Patreon gives you that opportunity. So if you'd like to vote in the poll that decides what's going to be covered each month, go and have a look at the corporal tier over on Patreon. That's where the polls are, are held. If you want to see more of this, there'll be photographs posted up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are all linked down below, and there'll be photographs of this over on those three platforms. And if you'd like to get in touch, but you don't really use social media, there's of course an email address in the description as well. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.